What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 2 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Mortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Wallacharkin entered the field and began his path of destruction toward Nuln wherein he occupied it and while he hasn't yet rebuilt the Bloodkeep library and the Bloodkeep itself, we are well on the way. Uh, we've also unlocked the Hidden Thread part 1 which as I understand it, is the uh, uh, quest to unlock Aberash, and are on the way to attack some orcs as well as Fyldorf, uh, the capital of the Golden Order. Things are looking pretty good. In fact, I think, uh, judging by the comments from the last episode, as uh, some of you had some tips specifically for this mod, uh, we should try to go for the quest battle first thing. If we are too damaged to attack the orcs and to attack the uh, Golden Order, maybe that's not the worst thing in the world, as I understand it is very important to get Aberash on the field as uh, somebody pointed out that he gets bonuses for defeating specific lords so until he's here oh, we probably shouldn't absolutely and destroy anybody plus as I understand it, this will also unlock the orders thing and the uh, worthy foes thing so there's a bunch of campaign mechanics that are locked away um behind that. So let's see what we're looking at. Wait, first of all, Wallach, Get I would like you to level up good, sir. Uh, we are going to go for... Hmm, what will we need here? I mean, we don't know what we'll need. The uh, uh, the reinforcement thing is a little bit vague. I think we're going to pop another point in Invocation of the Eternal Warrior just because we use it constantly. And then we'll see about other stuff later on. There is also merit to... Ooh, actually, you know what? Eternal Wanderer gives us an area augment for melee attack for everybody near, which is a good idea. And Eternal Discipline or Eternal Warrior, or Eternal Discipline slash Eternal Wanderer are both quite strong, but this gives us damage resistance. Yeah, fine. You know what? Let's get Heart Piercing first and then Invocation of uh, the Eternal Wanderer second. Then uh, we'll see what we're looking at here. Uh, the Hidden Threat um, Part 1. We get a decent amount of rewards, and even if we do get heavily damaged, we do get the bonus casualty replenishment, so we can take advantage of that. And the Road to Revenge is fought, fraught rather with perils, both expected and unexpected. Unexpected sounds to me like we're going to be encountering a lot of reinforcements here. Hmm. Without the reinforcements, I don't actually know whether the balance of power here considers reinforcements or not. I think it doesn't, but I could be wrong. But either way, teleport. Let's do this immediately. Oh, it's an ambush battle. Specifically, we're the ones getting ambushed. Okay, that's going to be interesting. And we don't know where the enemy reinforcements are coming from. Fortunately, being a vampire faction, or vampire counts faction, I should say, we're not really threatened by ambush battles. And generally speaking, ooh, the enemies get closer to our vampires and zombies and skeletons. Who cares? Uh, that's not really a problem. Now, before we get started on this battle, one quick thing. Like previous campaigns, like Archeon, like like Lewin, like Malekith, etc., etc., we will be running an engagement threshold sort of situation. And this campaign, that will determine the length of the next episode. Archeon is currently the one to beat with this streak of, at the current time, I want to say 39 episodes that were each an hour long. So, for this first attempt, we will go with 500 likes and 60 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well so if you're into that sort of thing don't forget to leave those likes and comments below and when we reach the fifth episode we will lower the threshold as we do anyway time to do our quest battle and let's see what we got Alrighty, here we go. Here's our column about to get ambushed, and it looks like the enemy is all deployed in this little forested area, uh, which is a kind of an interesting choice for uh, the uh, for uh, the vampire coast type units, as obviously the uh, uh, the forest will interfere with their firing capabilities. Ooh, what's that? Some kind of ability activation. Neat. 
Well, it looks like the enemy is going to start firing down on us and we'll immediately turn towards them. Our skeletons and our uh, zombies are going to eat plenty of fire as they move up there, but we don't care. Just drown the enemy in bodies as we do. Now, we do assume that the enemy reinforcements are on the way and we got to be careful about those guys wherever they come from, so we'll have to keep an eye out. Oh, reinforcements have arrived, but these are our reinforcements. It looks like Aberash has made it onto the field with a with a bunch of units. Sadly, in this particular battle, it seems like his army doesn't actually want to move. They sort of just sit there and wait, which is a bit of a shame, but, uh, well, uh, what can you do? On the bright side, however, he did provide us with a couple of additional reinforcements to you units of disciples of, of the path with uh, with those uh, lovely banners that they have got and each one is riding a zombie dragon by the looks of it as well and there are four units to a set and it should be a pretty darn powerful unit. 92 melee attack uh, before any kinds of buffs. And that's with the debuffs from Ambushed. Anyway, uh, we have summoned a unit of zombies on top of the Dusk Reaver Rifle Company here. And we are looking to distract both them and the Narcofex Colossus. While our single unit of Blood Dragon Knights will hunt down and destroy said Necrofex. Otherwise, our lords will hunt the enemy lords. And we will hopefully once again drown the enemy in bodies. I do like the look of these Dusk Reavers, though, looking pretty darn great, in my opinion, especially the uh, uh, the pike-wielding units. You gotta love those long pikes. Little Nashi giggle. Anyway, uh, we've got some animated hulks over on the flanks, and we did start off on them uh, with uh, the uh, with our lords, but they have peeled away and allowed the uh, two units of Bloodkin Thrall out of knights and two units of Bloodkin Thrall warriors to move in, while Wallach and Elfric head in to kill Mr. Lenny Brian. And back here, who's down to about half HP? There we go. Once again, you gotta love those pikes everywhere, though they make it a little bit uh, difficult to see sometimes. But hey, this is probably the best way you're going to protect your lord from a... Oh, wow, that does not look pleasant. <laughs> Uh, best way to protect your lord uh, from uh, the onslaught of a uh, blood dragon knight. It does look like the pikes are pretty effective. Elfred goes down to nearly half HP uh, from a couple of hits from them, so we do have to be careful. It looks like the unit of the animated hulks has collapsed on this flank due to the onslaught of the four units of uh, bloodkin adepts, and we can move them in to start fighting uh, the other uh, uh, dusk reaver pikes and whatever other units. Units. Looks like the enemy lord is in extremely bad shape now, down to a couple more hits and he will be out of here. In fact, down he drops. Uh, but as soon as he does, the second lord uh, moves in as a... Wait, are they both named Lenny Bryan or did I mix up the lord names? They couldn't have both been named Lenny Bryan, could they? Well, even if they are, they'll both be dead relatively shortly. Yeah, we're having a little bit of a tough time on the rightmost flank in the sense that we're not doing really any damage to them and the enemy's doing damage to us, but that's because it's all zombies and skeletons on these sides. We're not expecting to dish out damage because we're busy elsewhere. Uh, the uh, Blood Dragon Knights are absolutely wrecking that Necrofex Colossus and have lost only two of their numbers so far, especially with a little bit of help from that Bloodkin Aspirant uh, to get some hits in. We also have our reinforcing units, the Disciples of the Path, moving onto the field with the balance of power at about 90%. The battle is nearly hours before they get there. Ah, you still gotta love Necrofex Colossi, though still one of the top tier coolest looking units in the entire game, though this one will be dropping shortly. Speaking of dropping, down upon our foes, here come uh, these uh, Knights of the Path, or Disciples of the Path, Inner Circle. I should say dropping down amongst those spikes with little care uh, about the threat to them. Now, that's a lot of splash damage coming in from the zombies. They also had a Dragon's Breath, but I felt like it would be dangerous to do so when so many of our own units units are uh, interspersed among the enemy troops. It looks like Wallach has pretty much defeated the enemy lord who's down to 40% and is in critical binding as well, though we are now having to move Aelfric away lest he get killed as he's taken too much damage. And there we go, basic units are starting to drop around those uh, dragons. I love the uh, blood breath sort of ability that they have. 
It's probably not a blood bread, but it just looks cool. And rule of cool. It's still a good reason enough to have it. Uh, there we go, it looks like they've charged into the back of some of those other Dusk Reaver units and obliterated them. The enemy lord has now fallen with the death, or true death, I should say, of the enemy lord, the enemy army. The army begins to collapse, with the Necrofex Colossus fallen in the back lines. It looks like our uh, Cav has also managed to charge into the rear ranks of the enemy, and with that, the battle is ours. Certainly a bunch of these skeletons and zombies, especially here, where we didn't use any of our elites, uh, got very badly mauled, but it allowed us to kill both of the enemy lords and kill off all of the enemy elites on the leftmost flank with no trouble at all, as well as keep the enemy Necrofex Colossus and Rifle Company here. Uh, the rifles distracted by the zombies for the entire battle who did no damage to them but allowed us to keep them distracted while we killed the necrofex and then uh, sent the knights to surround and destroy the rifles and then to charge into their ear of the enemy army nice and yeah we had a little reinforcing force from abara somewhere out here but they uh, they probably trusted uh, a wallach and the other blood dragons to actually uh, you know take care of business on their own, as well they should prove their worth to their master. All right, very nice, very nice. Those Dusk Reaver units certainly did manage to rack up the kills, devastating our, well, the zombies and the skeletons, although uh, only hurting one unit of the Bloodkin, uh, Thrall Warriors, so and not a huge deal there. Either way, happy with that result, and I take it that's the first mission. Uh, let's see, I just want to see how much damage these guys managed to do. Ooh, 275 and 20k damage on the Dusk Reaver Raiding Company. Raider Company. And then this Rifle Company did even more at 23... Yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. Obviously, our Blood Dragon Knights would have done uh, the most damage. Not as much on the Bloodkin Thrall Warriors, but, uh, well, we uh, decided to drown the enemy in bodies. And so we did. Sadly, we got no help from this uh, Aberash army, but hey, at least uh, he sent some Disciples of the Path along for us to control. Not that we really needed these guys. Now... I guess we're going to have to heal up since we want to continue fighting and while we are damaged, we're not so damaged that I think we can't fight, so fight we shall. And thrall captives. And quest successful, hidden threat part one, win the following battle. Great, got some uh, decent amounts of martial valor, another dragon scale to upgrade Wallach's force. I think we needed three, Fire so we should be top. able to... Yeah, we should be able to upgrade this one as we please. We just need the horde growth. All right. And... Oh! That was only the one quest. Oh, fantastic. All right, Aberash, the first master and founder of the Blood Dragons, returned. Again, this is the Blood Dragons' bloodline, not the Order of Draconis that uh, we're currently in command of. His location was unknown for a long time. Some said he wandered north, deep into the Chaos Wastes, or east into the land of the Giants to seek out even greater conquests. Others said he followed the path of Sigmar and became a god. Others said he st others still said he walks among their ranks in the disguise of a young thrall watching for the most worthy amongst them. Now the legendary master of the blood dragons has returned to either take back his rightful position of the leader of the blood dragons or to follow Wallach on his campaign of revenge. Well obviously the master Aberash will rightfully rule over his faithful followers. Uh, Wallach is uh, an interesting character oh, but he's also kind of a maniac so... <laughs> Uh, or at the very least, much more of a maniac than, uh, uh, than Aberash is. Wallach's sort of obsessed with the whole knightly thing, but otherwise, yeah. Anyway, and plus Wallach felt corn, so I <laughs> can't really trust him. Uh, the master. Now, I do have to wonder... Alright, so we... Okay, that unlocks the order, and that unlocks the number of the next worthy foe encounter, but... Out of curiosity, does this do anything to the faction? 
Uh, now, okay, so Grandmaster of the Order of Draconis is still uh, up from Wallach, so I was just wondering whether switching to Aberash would change the way and that the faction functions in general, but it does appear that uh, we're still... Okay, great. And he appears to have spawned immediately on the map with some Blood Dragon Neophyte Warriors, some Bloodkin Thralls, and... Hmm... Here's a question. Which hunter threat? Will it spawn around Nuln slash Blood Keep, or will it spawn near Aberash, or will it spawn near Wallach? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out relatively shortly. This thing seems to be climbing relatively fast. All right, let's take a quick look at Aberash for a second. And ah, okay, so he uses the Demon Prince system, does he? Same sort of. Uh, uh, same sort of system where he has a bunch of items that you choose from which get him his stats. And gets heart piercing right away, which is great. No other choice, and you can choose between sword and board or two-handed and whatnot. Nice. Enraged battle cry, an explosion type of ability. We'll check all this out when we actually get him on the field. As for his skills, he gets the first blood dragon, a couple of passives, giving him ward save, melee defense, and da or mass damage resistance and melee defense. Ascended Wanderer gives him some healing. Well, go figure. Uh, Warrior Ascendant unlocks new weapons and fighting styles for Aberish. Yeah, so that's the uh, uh, the items. Now, I'm curious. Does he have any specific buffs to any specific units? All right, so his regular line does not. He can summon Warriors of Fold, Knights of Blood Keep, just like Wallach can. Uh, Dragon Ascendant, he can fly, he has a slightly different sort of lore accessible to him. Wall of Fire, oh, I love Wall of Fire. Wall of Crimson Death, slightly, a uh, very slightly different variation of it. All right, we'll see how that works out. Rain of Fiery Blood upgraded, all right. And this is a, a Piercing Bolt to Burning sort of analog. But otherwise, he doesn't seem to have any particular buffs specifically for units. What this means is that unlike Wallach Harkin, we can probably put any kind of... Uh, any kind of Ordo units into his army. It doesn't matter. He just likes Blood Knights, not specifically Blood Dragon or Ordo Draconis Blood Knights. Which is neat. Alright. I don't know where to move him as yet. We may want to... Can we recruit here? We can recruit only from what? Wait. If you go into Nuln... Hmm, wait. Another wait. Can we? Ah, I was hoping we could leech XP from Vicious Gobspit, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Hmm. Well, if we can't leech XP from him, then I guess we'll move in. So, you, sir. Zacharias go right here. We're gonna also have you raising Vissenberg later on. Then we'll have... Wallach attack this, I guess, after leveling up. Alrighty, let's get woe to all but the worthy, get those uh, get those passives up for him. We'll also give a quick read to the orders in a second. And then we can get honor or death for you. And just the uh, passive buff for you, damage resistance. Sailfrick did get a lot more hurt than Wallach did in that particular fight, so and you have to be careful with him, or at least a little bit more careful. And then you have raised dead maxed out. I still want Van Hells, and I'm probably going to say get some points in Van Hells. Maybe after evasion, just because you're still a little teensy bit fragile. At least compared to Wallach, but that's hardly surprising. Alrighty, you're good now. Let's take a look at the orders here. Awaken legendary lords and heroes from knightly orders and acquire powerful faction-wide benefits. Alright, so this is the this is similar to the whole bloodlines thing that the regular vampires have. Grandmaster Wallach Harkin is already awake. The lord will become available to be recruited. I guess we use this to just buff up the Order Draconis in general. And then the first awakening probably activates the lord... And then presumably the subsequent awakenings just get buffs. Ah, yes. Oh, I see. Hmm. So the Ordo Draconis doesn't start with any leadership penalties, but it seems like the others do. Meaning you want to awaken one order twice before really leaning into them too much. As to which one... 
Uh, it'll probably have to be the Ordo Templarius, because we'll want to head towards the uh, towards Castle Drakenhof and get the Drakenhof Templars up and running. So Anarch von Karstein will probably be, be will probably be the better choice than this Abyssal Revenant fella. I'm just seeing what all this does. And it seems like this gives us human lords can be turned into becoming vampire lords when defeated in battle or targeted by hero. Lords turned by this mechanic will convert into a lord of the same knightly order as the agent is as the agent is they were defeated by. Uh yeah, sure. Alright, so here's what we'll do. We'll do one awakening of the Ordo Draconis again. And we only have four blood kisses. Like so. To buff up the Ordo Draconis. All right, rebuilt this... Oh. In defeating which Hunter assaults towards the following, the numbers changed. I have to wonder whether this means that uh, the attacks, presumably from the Witch Hunter threat, will get more powerful. Hmm. I guess we'll find out. Uh, orders. And then we'll awaken you. Okay, so he didn't appear on the field. Uh, let's see. I take it uh, you have insufficient to blah blah blah. I think it said that you can recruit them, so it'll become available. The occupation for this Ordo Templarius Bloodkeep is unlocked, but I guess we want to head towards Castle Drakenhof uh, for that particular thing. This also unlocks their technology, so martial law is now available. Lord Recruitment locked Drakenhof Templar Lord. Ah, so we need the second awakening to get the Drakenhof Templar Lords up and running. And recruitment cost penalties as well. Yeah, so just to double check. Yeah, so we don't have access to them yet. We just need to rack up four more blood kisses. All right, that's uh, that's perfectly reasonable. Wallach, hit Mr. Vicious over here. Like... Wait, do we... Ah, no. I was wondering whether we could uh, ask to somebody to join the war against them, but alas, not the case, declare war. <laughs> Pollock seems like a very happy fella, uh, which he actually really isn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Stance, march stance, and it's just a bunch of savage orcs, some savage orc boar boys, so maybe we can have some cavalry on cavalry action, which we've been missing so far. Away we go. Disciple to Alrighty, here we go right into those savage orcs. Gotta love that Vanguard deployment and can't wait to get more on uh, Ordo Draconis units so that we have plenty more of that Vanguard deployment to rely upon. Now the rest of our army will slowly enter the fray. It's gonna take a little bit of a while to get there, but that's fine. We've got plenty of orcs to occupy ourselves with in the meantime. Now, there's definitely going to be a few of these uh, smaller battles, I think, in this episode, but hey, we got the uh, quest battle, which was pretty nice, and we do have to clear these minor armies out. This one, and then the army belonging to the, uh, uh, the Golden Order right after. But hey, it's only the second episode. We're bound to have some smaller battles to start uh, the campaign off. And then ramp up as we go and spread out in all directions. Anyway, uh, how are we doing here? Looks like several of the uh, enemy savage orcs are having a very bad time against the Blood Knights. And here comes a few reinforcement uh, units. The Bloodkin Adepts, or the Adept Knights I should say, are in and racking up that XP as they will soon and become Blood Dragon Knights as well. Wallach's army will be full-on Blood Dragon after all, especially since he has that Vanguard deployment thing. I wonder if it applies to heroes or uh, units only. There's a lot of stats that have a bad tendency to not apply to uh, uh, to lords or heroes. Sometimes, like for example, Grimgore was a good example of this. Uh, he buffs black works to an insane degree, but to the point that the black works have so much more armor than Grimgore himself does, which always felt a little bit weird. And generally speaking, the game is like that. Lords will buff their uh, unique units or their uh, signature units. Um, but will not buff themselves despite oftentimes being a signature unit of the same variety. 
And it kind of doesn't make sense for Grimgor not to have the best of the best stuff, you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, that's all irrelevant and a digression. Looks like the Savage Orcs are actually holding fairly decently. I mean, they are Savage Orcs, so they have that physical resistance due to their war paint on top of the fact that they have Frenzy, so they fight uh, stronger than their basic stats imply outside of the battle, plus the AI's cheats and buffing them up even further. Um, but the banner of Blood Keep still flies over the uh, over these uh, green skins, and it will not fall mm, to the likes of them. Soon the battle will be ours, more units are moving in, and the enemy is now getting surrounded um, by the mobs of zombies and skeletons. We have peeled away one of our units of adept knights on the rightmost flank, well, before on the leftmost flank, but to move to the rightmost flank to hunt down the boar boys that have been annoying our zombies by charging them in the rear. Uh, there we go, and uh, the Adept Knight should have no problem hunting the Boar Boys down. In fact, they're shaken already, and they just don't like that. Uh, the other Adept Knights have peeled away and are working over on this side, just because they can move a little bit faster and uh, get to this flank. Whereas all these guys are still kind of stuck in combat. Fortunately, though, the enemy lord is nearly done. Wallach is quacking away at him, and Vicious Gobspit is down to below half HP while his savage orcs uh, start running. In fact, all of them will start running, and the battle will be ours. Very nice. Very nice. About a three-minute battle, about standard battle length. Nothing too long, but also not too short. So I'm reasonably happy with that. Decisive victory, and hey, at least this way we got to fight some orcs before we move into orky territories. I like my battle variety. And it's one of the reasons that uh, Archaon's campaign has been going so well, and I'm hoping to similarly send armies, uh, uh, armies of blood dragons or just blood knights in general, out into all the corners of the world to fight all the various different foes. Alright, very nice, very nice. Our poor Zombos and Skellies have certainly been taking a beating, but that's what they're there for. We can... Hmm. 9.5k, it's not so bad now that we have multiple armies that uh, will probably need upgrades built. Do we really care about healing up the zombies and stuff? I'm not sure that we do. We just sacrifice them. And then rebuild them as needed. Yeah, let's just release the captives for more cash. Alrighty, and fare thee well, Vicious Gobspit. Thank you for the additional dragon scale. Now, ah, damn, I was hoping we'd be able to raid Fildorf. But alas, it isn't the case. Alrighty, well, that's fine. Uh, let's pop you into Hidden Encampment Stance, or whatever it's called. Pop you right... I don't know, here. Go, my uh, like so. Decent likelihood that this guy tries to go after Zacharias, so uh, maybe we'll get something out of that. We got a student. Lovely. And we'll give it to you. It doesn't really matter who we give him to. And what do we have here? Yeah, Wallach has pretty much every item, but uh, that's fine. It's not like we need to give any to Aberrush since he generates his own items. Now, you need the hunger and invocation of the... Ooh. Probably want to get the Curse of Undeath on you first. And then the Hunger and Invocation maxed out and the Restless Dead. And, oh! Uh, you have Honor and Death Passive and just Gaze of Nagash. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, you don't have access to the full lore, which once again does make sense because Blood Dragons do tend to have a, uh, a stunted command of the magics. Since they don't really feel the need because they're all about that martial discipline. Now, speaking of martial discipline, or martial valor, uh, can we now upgrade a few of our troops? Uh, let's see, you're rank 7, so we can upgrade you. You can be upgraded at rank 9, so nearly there for the veteran Blood Dragon Knights, nice. Alright, I guess we can get our first uh, regular Blood Dragon Knights uh, here. It's gonna cost us 400 martial valor, sure. And how long until we can upgrade the Bloodkin? Uh, at least the Neophyte Warriors at rank 7. That's not bad. They're both at rank 6 and, or six and 5, so that uh, should be fairly quickly reachable. Uh, you, sir. I can have you start generating some Skeleton Warriors since I don't want to merge these guys, and you're nearby anyway. And Aberash, out of curiosity... Oh, right. I was wondering whether we should move him over here. <laughs> Huh. Here's the thing. If we want to attempt to bait Mr. Gavin Thuringman, Thuringman, 
And if we move Aberash nearby, we m he might not fall for the bait. Alright, you know what, Aberash? Go into the Blood Knight outpost. Right here. We might have you help with raising Vissenberg or something. Still got a leech XP and that sort of thing. Mm, let's say right here. And then... Oh no, his shield is uh, floating away when he uh, uh, flies forward. And then we can... Ooh. Precious metal. Yeah, now we need to save the precious metal for the upgrade. Wait. Darkness so you don't need precious metal to upgrade the order encampment. We order encampment, whatever. And we just need the growth here. But we will, I think, need the precious metal for something here. Ah, we'll need it for this thrall warrior tent. And you actually have access to a different building chain, and you'll similarly need precious metals for it. Yeah, we're going to need to raise a bunch of stuff in order to actually get this going. And But that's all right. And I'm curious to see about this uh, worthy foes thing. So let's upgrade, or let's uh, heal up. No, let's apply uh, our points, and then let's see what that does for us. Strength of Steel for you, sir. And then we won't be able to hit and rage battle cry until level 15. Explosion ability allows chance to escape melee. Frankly, this is on our units less uh, of a, a tool to escape so much as it would be a tool to uh, dish out uh, uh, to get through an enemy line and then get to you know what and let's replenish troops and uh, get through an enemy line and get to the enemy lord through the press as our, our lord and hero do have a tendency to get stuck anyway uh invocation of nehek and raise dead is good i think i said i was gonna go for van hells next we could also max out wind of death Miscast isn't really an issue at the current time. Mostly since we're not overcasting invocations all that much, just uh, healing single elite units. Yeah, you know what, let's start building up Van Hells. We could also do training. You know what, actually, you know what, let's do tra Oh, wait. I forget, do you have access to training? Yeah, you have access to both training and the other thing. Uh, I have to wonder whose training will be used here. I guess if we level you second, then it'll be your training. Eh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, 35. Casual to punishment trait, yada yada. Everything else looks good to me. Building upgrade available in Nome. We can build something here. No, this is not worth our time. Yeah, all right. End the turn. All right. Uh, let's see if the bait works, A, and then B... We'll see about this worthy foe thing. Ah, all right. Battle deployment. It is a chance to intercept. They do go for Zacharias, but we should be able to destroy. And this army, medium casualties, and we are still hurt. And this army will have to survive while we wait for, uh, uh, while we wait for Wallach's reinforcements. And you're not on a steed, so you're gonna need to be careful. But away we go again. All right, here we go, Zacharias, our new Ordo Draconis Lord, well, newish at this point. And we are not going to send him into combat immediately. Looking pretty good, though. Uh, we are going to wait here in the trees, hidden, while we wait for the reinforcements to arrive. Certainly, we will send him into combat against a few forces, but he's going to get surrounded and destroyed if he has to fight everything. So, I'm going to speed it up a little bit while Wallach enters the fray, especially with the uh, faster-moving units of his army, and it looks like the enemy army will react to that. As soon as they do, Zacharias can send the zombies, at least first, out of the trees and start moving towards you know, this unit of Free Company Militia. Free Company Militia's guns have very, very little armor piercing on them, but fortunately for them, the zombies are not armored, and thus they should be pretty effective with those pistols against them, or at least reasonably so, taking about 25% of HP off the zombies. That said, the enemy probably shouldn't have allowed them to enter into melee, and should have just kited the zombies around instead of this, as uh, they will now get bogged down, and it will enable Zacharias to move in and start whacking away. And he'll be able to dish out the damage for the uh, zombie horde, especially with the amount of splash damage that he clearly deals. There we go, very nice. 
He's got 12 kills out of two swings, so six enemies killed per swing. Now, let's see what's going on over here. Our units are moving onto the field. Looks like some uh, free company militia are going to start taking shots at those Bloodkin Thrall Warriors. And they will start taking a little bit of damage, despite the 81 armor. Uh, their uh, cab has arrived and has... Well, they're pretty much obliterated. Two units of spears. Uh, Aelfric and Teresia, uh, our uh, Bloodkin Thrall, have moved over here to distract as many of the enemy range units as they can. Free company or archers or whatever they can find. While Wallach is now hunting the enemy lord and has found him and should probably destroy him fairly quick. Ooh, I like those explosive shots on that Witch Hunter General. When, okay, Witch Hunter Inquisitor General. Sure, game, sure. All right, but the Witch Hunter does not have uh, too much uh, chance against Wallach and will, in fact, break and uh, run while Wallach hunts him down, as long as he doesn't get distracted by random spears and whatnot. And we are still holding here, no problem at all, but we will get a few uh, zombies to aid in the matter. A little bit hard to see, but there are zombies arising from amongst uh, the enemy ranks, and that will enable them to take some hits, and Dale Frickin' Co. not to instead. The rest of our units are arriving on the field as well. The uh, knights are continuing to ride around in the background and essentially destroy blobs of enemies, uh, but we're keeping them by and large in the background in this particular battle, as since the enemy is not in march stance, we actually don't want to... Uh, uh, we don't want them all routing and breaking immediately. We want to slowly grind down each individual unit so that we can then chase them down and destroy them with our cab. Rather than having them return to their settlement or having to fight them again right after. And just the better, more efficient way to do it in this particular case. Spearmen almost overrun here, and Free Company Militia almost overrun there. The uh, zombies and skeletons being led um, by our two units of Bloodkin Thralls. Bloodkin Thrall Warriors, and we gotta enjoy them while we have them, at least these two units, as they will soon and be upgraded to Blood Dragon Neophytes as well. How's Zacharias doing? Still holding by the looks of it, and he's racked up, let's see. He's racked up 76 kills while the zombies are at only 16, but that's about right. He's also taken basically no damage from anything, and with these two zombies distracting the enemy for him, he's doing all the work. And this just feels completely appropriate. This is what a vampire counts, uh, and it's sort of like what the vampire counts faction factions, I guess, uh, functions like in microcosm. Piles of zombies and chaff infantry being powered up by things that are uh, supporting them, in addition to the uh, small numbers of elites and dishing out massive amounts of damage. And Zachariah is certainly proving his worth. If he continues doing well, we might uh, we might change one von Schwarzhofen into something else. If he earns his name to be added as a legend, obviously it's going to take time for him to do that. And oh, he actually has the animation for that horn ability. Hmm. I take it that was the uh, horn of the. Yeah, he has an ability that allows him to heal everybody nearby. So that's nice. Or maybe it's a casting animation. Either way, he's still doing great work, up to 128 kills now, whereas the rest of the army has shattered. And since we've uh, seen these guys uh, do work over the last few battles, I wanted to uh, watch Zacharias for a little bit. Since it's going to be a while before he has a full stack that can function on his own, A, and B, because it's really dark on that side of the map, and uh, it was a lot brighter on this one. There we go. All right, with that, the last of the enemy units have shattered, and 100. 33 kills to his name where actually take a fairly took a little bit of a while to do this battle but to be fair it also took about two minutes to get to the uh, to get the reinforcements from wallach onto the field anyway there's a lot of chasing to do since we need to destroy the enemy army but we'll do it off screen
All right, very nice, very nice. Took a lot of uh, chasing, but most of the army was destroyed from that. Plus, Zacharias actually got a chance to uh, fight, so uh, happy for him. Potion of foolhardiness acquired, but a, rel a relatively useless item, at least compared to potions of toughness, healing, and... I mean, I suppose for vampires, the unbreakable thing may be more helpful on occasion than the strength, but strength is more immediately always usable as in every single fight, whereas this is very, very niche and uh, is only helpful if you're already losing horribly. Anyway, uh, we can get no mileage out of replenishing because it'll only replenish this army, unfortunately, so we'll release those captives. All right. And, oh, that stopped Wallach's encampment. Oh no, does that mean his army didn't heal? Oh, that's unfortunate. Maybe I shouldn't have done it that way. Oh well, too late. Too late now. Let's see what we got here. Enemy killed in battle, Gavin the Thuringman. There's that potion of foolhardiness, and what is this? Oh, the worthy foe thing. A worthy foe has been sighted in this vicinity. Enter the marker with any lord or hero, or any lord, to find out. Does that mean we have to fight it immediately, is the question. I'm a little bit concerned right now about this witch hunter threat thing. Hmm. As we don't... If it attacks Nuln, we'll need all of our armies back here for when it happens. I guess if we were to raise Wissenberg and maybe even sack Fyldorf, we could uh, probably force the issue. Which may not be the worst idea in the world. Alrighty, let's do this. You... I wish Balthazar Gelt was here. Wait, how many territories do you have? You have three. Okay, so I think unlikely to just get destroyed. Who are you at war with? Uh, you're currently at war with just us. Okay, so. And we won't uh, lose Balthazar Gelt. And just out of curiosity. Uh, is it here? The Errant Duelist. Yes. Okay, so defeat everybody in battle. Gives you a bunch of buffs. Yeah, we're going to have to... Pull a wolf frick and just hunt down all the, uh, hunt down all the lords. I'm just looking for Balthazar Gelt to see whether his defeat trade is uh, great. I mean, because of the armor that he gives, he's probably worth it already. I probably missed him in here, didn't I? Yeah, looks like I missed him. If only there was a search function for this, or a proximity function, as in they're ordered by whoever's closest to you. Uh, I probably skipped over him again, didn't I? Hmm. You know what? The easiest way to find out is to kill him, and then that will... Uh... Damn it, I just want to know. Uh, well, whatever. Uh, we'll defeat him, and then we'll see. What I guess we'll want to do is we'll want to raise this, and we'll want to sack Fyldorfs. Oh, in that light. We'll move Wallach here. Every mortal. Yeah, 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 slay every mortal. I know you like that sort of thing. Uh, then we'll move... Ooh, wait. Can we upgrade you yet? No, and uh, neither of you. Alright, we're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, then we'll move you, Zek, here, and uh, Barash to reinforce. We'll want our main army to continue moving. Alright, Abra... Hey. There we go. Uh, let's see. We cannot auto-resolve this. Alright, so I guess we're gonna manually fight this super quickly. Yeah, Alright, fine. We're gonna manually fight this. Uh, I don't think there's any need for a cinematic for this sort of uh, a weak little fight. We can just send our lords and the blood knights in to uh, do all the work. And keep all the uh, badly damaged skelly boys away from all the fighting. And the zombos as well. And just keep them in decent enough shape so that uh, when those witch hunters arrive... I know I'm, I'm being quite wary, but I like I said, I haven't... Uh, I don't have experience with the mod, so I don't know what degree of strength we'll have to be facing off against with those guys and whether they spawn near us or around the... Uh, or around Bloodkeep or around our lord or somewhere else. So until I've seen it work the first time, I'd like to uh, just uh, be relatively careful with it. Uh, got a minute and a while until these guys move on the field. You know, let's set up over on this side. Outside of SFO and vanilla sieges are relatively trivial anyway, so it's not like it's a big deal. Uh, we'll send you all in. At least this way we can't get a desync either. And then you guys have decent HP. Eh, I can send you in as well. 
All right, and I believe that's not everybody. I'm missing the Bloodkin. Yeah, okay, guys, go here. All right. All right, start battle and go for the gate. You can head directly for those crossbows. Hopefully we don't take too much damage. Yeah, they're going to damage the Bloodkin, but whatever. All right, speed it up a little bit, head up onto those walls, break through that gate at a rapid pace, I'm sure. And then we can start summoning units on the inside of the enemy settlement. All right, let's keep you on the walls, though, or above them, whatever, as you will. Don't do anything crazy, sir. And we'll speed this up a little bit while we're wading through bodies and to get through that gate. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just sort of hover away from uh, missile fire. Ooh, wow, that's a big blob of enemies. Uh, yeah, why not? Speed this up a little bit. And hit him again. Like so. And are they still under, they're still firing on you. All right, I really don't like you, sir. All right, good, and you guys stopped. You should not have stopped. You should be outside the gate and attacking said gate, but I guess we can just heal you up in a second. Let's also pop the powers of darkness and... Okay, 16 seconds, good. All right, we're through the gate now. Everybody get on in there. And then we'll cast a heal on the bloodkin. Then we can move... Oh, damn, I didn't need to heal you. Yeah, whatever. Too late. Let's get you on in there, and let's get everybody approaching. All right, now, take a quick look at Aberash while we're here, finally on the field. Uh, I did actually take a look at what the, he looked like uh, in a custom battle, just because I was curious, and wow, you are a big boy. You're a very big boy. <laughs> uh, somebody's uh, taking some chaos steroids by the looks of it. Hmm, he is much larger than the regular uh, of vamps, but anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, Aberash walks, he doesn't fly off field, although he did have that ability, which might mean that he can, in fact, fly afterwards. Uh, heart piercing, lightning reflexes, and throw down the gauntlet, so a bunch of buffs, mainly damage resistance, healing, and that sort of thing, which is appropriate. Anyway, let's get back to the fight, we'll see if we can uh, get them into combat, though there's no guarantee of such. Let's also activate another power of darkness on you. And let's have an, I don't know, invocation of a heck from you on these blood thr bloodkin thralls. Huh, can't target them? Why? They're not rampaging. Weird. Uh, wait, actually, while we have you, fight or die on you, let's... Tr Valid targets ally. Oh, is it because they're under the gate? It might be because they're under the gate. All right, that's fine. Anyway, let's just uh, watch this for a little while. Not much to see here, but, uh, well, breaking through the breach like this is always a reasonably fun time. And once again, I gotta love that banner. I wish we had more units that uh, had banners available to them. It probably adds more, like, polygons onto the map, though that's, which isn't necessarily a great thing. Uh, okay, upgrade the Bloodkin, who is badly damaged now, and let's move him out so he doesn't get... Hurt. Man, the AI really loves to uh, missile fire upon this guy. Let's uh, summon some dead. To stop these guys annoying him. And lift off for a little while. You can heal up good, sir. How are we looking? Oh, you know what we can also do? Zacharias, use the uh, uh, use the Horn of Blood Keep. And, once, and he really shouldn't... Why does he have El Sif? <laughs> That's weird. Uh, El Sif is the Arabian name for the Red Duke, so generic lord probably shouldn't have that. I mean, I'm sure that the, uh, the modders probably just wanted to use the ability. But that's specifically the Red Duke. Anyway, uh, where are you? Alright, have you actually reached your healing cap? Yeah, we might need to acquire that thing that upgrades healing caps. Hmm. At the very least on the Lords, it seems like it'll be uh, quite the buff. Uh, so how fast does Aberash move on foot? Uh, 50 move speed. Still a little bit too slow in my opinion. I wonder if there's an SFO sub-mod for this. I mean, right now SFO doesn't work because there's no patch anyway, but uh, if there was, I would love to use it just for the additional speed on the vampires on foot, because vampires on foot can run just about as fast as a, a horse can anyway. At least Aberash is quite a bit faster than the Bloodkin and stuff, which are only a little bit above standard infantry speeds, but nonetheless. Anyway, is this all that's in here? There's a couple more troops out here. Ow! Whoa, 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 there's an Arch Elector. Oh, Aberash, go kill him. Go one-on-one -on -one him. 
All right. Hopefully he doesn't break before the uh, the battle ends, as that would be tremendously unfortunate. Uh, the rest of these units in here are certainly in the process of breaking slash being broken. Probably also want to move away from the walls. I've had it happen in several campaigns now, in both the Archeon campaign, where a cockatrice just died, and the... Uh, Torox campaign where a lord died by virtue of being close to a wall and uh, the bug insta-killing them from full HP. Although it was particularly funny in the Torox campaign because the lord was just kind of moving in with his chariot from outside the settlement, sort of moved by the wall and just died. <laughs> uh, when something like that happens... And Zinch did it. Alright, Abrash is moving on in. Is there anything that we'll want to use in a one-on-one -on -one fight? Heart piercing, yes, lightning reflexes. Ooh, gives you speed. Mm, yeah, just do it. Close about a little bit faster. I would like to see a you do good, sir. Ah, there we go. Now he is booking it. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh, nice leap. And it looked like it missed, but the enemy lord was staggered, so it looked so it did actually hit. Let's activate card piercing. This guy's a lot of armor, and ooh, Abrash certainly likes uh, a leaping around. Throw down the gauntlet. Alright, let's get a couple more good shots in slow mo, and then we'll uh, we'll get back to what we were doing. It'll be a little bit until Abrash gets his own uh, his own proper force, because it's taking some time to recruit stuff. Though fortunately, since he's his own, uh, uh, since he's own his own horde army, we can build now twice as fast in terms of units. There we go. Ooh, very nice. Enemy lords having a bad time. Oh, I the the, the sword throw animation, fantastic. Uh, Arch Electra's down to about half HP now. Are we still in slow mo? Yeah, we're in still in slow mo. All right, regular mo now. And yeah, Arch Electra's having a pretty bad day. Abrash hits for 620. Not too hard hitting on. There's the victory. Probably do want to chase this guy down, though. And chase him down we can because Abrash is quite quick. Even if not as quick as I'd like. Alright, it's going to take a little bit of a time to do this. Get a couple more hits in there. And let's see the execution. And there we go. Do you lose an arm? I think that's the arm loss execution. I didn't see his head go flying. I saw his uh, his hammer of Sigmar go flying. No, he didn't lose an arm. I guess it was just a wound to the back, the coward's wound, and something I think that the blood dragons in particular uh, would disparage. Certainly not worthy to be raised again as a uh, worthy foe if you'll run uh, from your fight. All right, anyway. Uh, easy little fight, obviously, but we couldn't auto-resolve, so we had to do it, and I wanted to see Abarash on the field, and uh, I think that was very much worth it, just because of that. Zero losses, etc., etc., but that's why we went in with the uh, elite unit Death Star rather than uh, sending in skeletons. If the enemy had a bigger blob, I would have just sent the skeletons and zombies up the walls to distract them. All right, come on now. All right, good. A free war banner. We can sack it. I want to maintain movement range. Then, scroll of shielding, mount... Blood Dragon Barded Nightmare for Zacharias, Swell Scourge of Mankind for Zacharias, Plunderer for Wallach. Next up, what we want to do is we want to move Wallach in encampment beside Wissenberg. Wait. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's so amused. He's he's such a he's such a happy guy. Uh, we'll want to use Zacharias to move here. Yeah, just just, just, just wait a second. And then we'll want Aberash in here as well for a little bit of XP leech. Then we will want to move you right here. And then Zacharias, you have everybody attacking. It'll kill off a skeleton. I am frankly too lazy to just manually fight this, so just not resolve it. Whatever. Oh, it killed off a zombie as well. Well, whatever. Wait, did the skeleton revive? I think the skeleton revived. Or did it? It's kind of hard to tell whether it's grayed out or not. Uh, I think uh, the dead rose again there. Anyway, this one we want to raise for the precious metals, which gives us the six that we need. No, 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 no. Oh, I didn't want that to happen. That's concerning. 
Should have stopped him from moving away from there, but oh well. A great and worthy egg for Zacharias. Well, hopefully you don't die, Zacharias. And ooh, we got a staff of damnation. Quite a nice, uh, quite a nice pickup. Actually, we can put it on the bloodkin and have him buff everybody in the vicinity using that. It's plus 40 melee attack. Only for 25 seconds, granted, but it's a big old effect and quite useful. Zaki. We could actually protect him by moving. Aberash closer, or no, by moving Wallach closer, but I'm just gonna hope that he survives. Do this mod's lords, they don't start with immortality, so if you die, you die. Hmm. Okay, good luck, sir. Uh, hopefully we can back away. Uh, what do you need to do? Occupy a desert jungle mountainous climate. Occupy. Okay, so we'll need to raise a keep somewhere. Uh, maybe at Grimhold? Seems like a reasonably safe place, though the Wood Elves would probably be annoyed by it. Or we could do Carrick Hearn or something like that. <laughs> and we shall see. Uh, what we now need to do slash want to do is, first of all, Wallach. We could go for the Order Encampment. I uh, take it Aberash will also need to, but we've got the scales coming in now, so it's not as bad. Black Orc Warboss. Nearby events indicate that this worthy folk has recently been roaming the surrounding lands. Turn remaining five. Huh. So we need to hit this before the five turns are up. Okay, so maybe we'll send... I think it's not like a one-on-one -on -one duel. It's like an actual army. It would be neat if it was a one-on-one, -on -one, though. Uh, order encampment for you. And we'll need to immediately build a Thrall Warrior tent. Gotta get those Bloodkin up and running. Abrush, you cannot recruit from Wallach, but I believe Zack should be able to. I guess you can recover one... Student of the one. Hmm. Well, you get a couple Skeleton Warriors. It'll go a lot faster very shortly. Just need a little bit more work on it. Let's also start you off with Restless Dead. We need everybody moving fast. You also have a level or two, now just the one. <laughs> I'm really enjoying his laughing. Anyway, I believe that's all we can do for now. Also, I see that we can see Vlad's faction, Sylvania, on the map. But we can't see the library itself, so I take it this had to do with Awakening Anarch von Karstein. Hmm. Alright, we'll see if the Switch Hunter threat is up and running to full uh, next turn. Alright, and skip, skip, and turn, go. At least nobody's attacking Nuln yet. Because we've got... I spoke too soon. Carl is right there, but he's in March stance. Ooh, can we reach him? Well, that would be just swell. Oh, man. Ah. How much sharpers, sharpeners here as well? Hmm. All right. First of all, ah, just a little bit too far. What about Wallach? No, nah, they're both just a little bit too far. Which hunter attack is imminent? I take it he's moving to occupy Donnerbach, which isn't the worst thing. I guess we could declare war on Helmet, destroy his army here, and then move back around to sort of sit around here, wait until Karl Franz occupies Donnerbach, kill him, and then presumably defend Null? I'm just assuming again. Anyway, uh, faction destroyed Paravon, not one we care about. Melee attack for Thralls, great technology researched. Grow your forces, recruit 30 new units. Oh, we're working on it. Uh, then... What is this? Oh, it's Razor Standard. Okay, just wanted to see what the reward was. Uh, we have new techs available. Now, Unholy Growth will allow us to upgrade Nuln faster, but I think we want to get Unholy Endurance first, just because it only takes one turn. Martial Law gives an enemy control reduction, which we don't really care about. Ambush Defense Chance, Missile Resistance. Yeah, so this is all for the uh, Templehof, or Drakenhof Templars, rather. But that doesn't help us right now. And, oh, we can immediately get uh, Order of the Blood Dragons from here and then start buffing them up. Though, considering this costs Martial Valor, I think right now it's not going to be worth our time. We need that Martial Valor to get more uh, more elite units. Anyway. I guess we quickly kill this guy. We're going to have Aberash lead the army to get his XP up a little bit more and move Wallach in as a reinforcement. Let me do that. All right. Uh... Oh, we may also want to trade some... Well, I, I don't know how this will work. All right, let's start with this guy. He's right there. And yes, we're declaring war on basically everybody around us, but it also feels quite appropriate. All right, so we're going to have Aberash lead. Well, look, you're going to go right here. I wish this didn't take up so much of your movement range. 
But what can you do? Funnily enough, we probably could have just sent Aberash and Zacharias, and they would have just slowly run the enemy down over time, but oh well. We still have to wait for Gelt for Aberash as well. You are at war with who again? Disciples of the Ma. Join war against Everland. For money. Not much money, but some money. All right, and do we want to level everybody up? Nah, not for this fight, not for this fight. One more fight and then that'll be it for this episode. That's the way we go again. Here we go. I just can't say no to seeing Aberash in action one more time, even if it isn't going to be a particularly difficult fight. But hey, uh, this is not the fifth step the fifth battle in this episode. Oh man, this is gonna take a lot of editing. Hmm. Now what? What can you do? Uh, at least we've had fun, and this is also our first sighting of the Blood Dragon Neophyte Warriors, which we'll have plenty more of, uh, probably starting uh, from next episode, so interesting to see them in action as well, and see how well those great swords of theirs do. Anyway, we're going to move forward as much as we can. Going to wait a little bit of a while for Wallach to get onto the field, but we'll send Aberash to duel the enemy general one-on-one, -on -one just because, well, that's what he has to do. And there we go, Wallach has arrived, we're going to peel the Blood Dragon Neophyte units away and send them to fight something, while Aberash, heedless of all the other enemies around, will head towards the enemy lord. There we go. Probably isn't going to be a particularly long duel as it's a basic uh, Empire General. And you guys should probably also not interfere with the duel. Seems like a bad idea. I do feel like the glow is a little bit much on the uh, on the shield and stuff, but oh well. Anyway, oh, was he dead already? Uh, yes he is. All right, Aberash, good job. Uh, the enemy lord certainly died quick, and now Aberash can kill some chaff. We also got a little bit of fighting action going from our units of the Blood Dragon Neophytes. Oh, which four Neophytes and look like they're holding their ground fairly well. There are 28 of them, and they're up to uh, about 90% of their HP, running down some archers, which are very weak units, obviously, who have no chance against this. Although there are spears, and I believe I saw a pistolier unit nearby, as or these are pikemen, but uh, yeah. No, they're called spearmen in this. Pretty sure in SFL they're called pikes, right? Do, do, do spears... There's, there's pikes, and then there's spears and shielded spears. Unless I'm mistaken. Man, constantly playing SFO and then occasionally playing vanilla just gets me very confused often. As to trying to remember who exists in what. Pikes are different from spears, I just don't remember whether pikes actually exist in uh, in the vanilla version, or whether that's an SFO only thing. Anyway, now it's a simple matter of running the enemy down wherever we find them, the Blood Dragon Neophytes and uh, the Thrall Bloodkin, now uh, Bloodkin Adept Thrall Warriors, whatever. Uh, blood, okay, Bloodkin Thrall Warriors uh, doing so all over the map, just a few more enemy units to kill, but the enemy is nearly shattered already. Wallach is in the middle of two units by the looks of it. He was trying to get towards somebody else, so he's trying to use his mass to get through them, but alas, is having a little bit of a difficult time. Not that that matters all that much. And with that, I do believe the battle should be just about over. Gonna pop a uh, chill wind down upon this enemy blob as Wallach gets annoyed that the enemy will not part ways uh, before him, and then finally turns upon them to begin attacking. To begin attack, you were supposed to swing on Q, man. There you go. <laughs> a little better. And there we go. Plenty of splash damage with that particular attack. And the last enemy unit will shatter, and the battle will be ours. Nice. We got a quick little duel for Aberash, a little bit of fighting for everybody else. No need to chase him down, and the battle is ours.
All right, super easy little fight, but it's free money, free XP, and more importantly, as we need to raise and the strength of our forces, the enemy army was also always going to do horribly because archers are a terrible, terrible unit, and so we shouldn't be surprised. We get, I mean, I guess take the money for this again. Still do need some of the cash, a little bit of extra. Ooh, we got a Black Perry app dead. Okay, that was 100% worth it then. 100%. And I know that some of these little battles are uh, obviously not much of a challenge, but we can't auto resolve them right now. But not to worry, as soon as we have access to Graveguard, our armies will become a lot stronger in terms of uh, their auto resolve capabilities. So these smaller battles will no longer be needed to be fought in the same manner, which will be nice. As for what we're doing now, now we'll move. Hmm. I wanna do we have to be in regular sense? I wanna oh, see what's cool. here. Let's just let's just send the hammer. I'm just curious. I assume even if it is a fight, we'll be able to Right to battle. Defeating this opponent in battle will earn all of its rewards. If foe of worth appears, right to battle. Does this send us into battle or does this activate a quest? How does this work? find out right to bed i just just cure ah, okay it's a quest that's a quest that's not a it's not as concerning so we have the mossy scales vine dragon scale ooh an area hex it's only for 14 seconds but cannot move is nice it's effectively a tormentor's sword and uh, with a bunch of melee defense reduction and fairly decent defensive capabilities no ward save but still quite nice a brewer's instincts gives us a bunch of buffs free valor and is this time limited reinforcements expected yeah i imagine it's not just these three <laughs> if it was just these three i'd send avarosh in by himself uh but i doubt that it is all right anyway i think with that we're in a pretty good place in terms of calling the episode here so that's what i'm going to do we'll leave zacharias and avarosh nearby we'll march stance hmm We'll probably want to get to Nalna just in case for the Witch Hunter threat, as we'll probably be able to end the turn. Maybe attack Carl Franz. If, we, if he goes to Donnerbeck and if Abarash can reach him, then we could get the uh, Carl Franz defeat immediately, which would be just swell. And uh, we'll be fighting our first Witch Hunter Retribution. Holy War of Retribution next time, so that should be a pretty fun time as we start recruiting more units and uh, separating these armies to hunt things separately. And we'll probably also so start Wallach on his journey to Castle Drakenhof. We gotta activate our first order, Ordo Templarium uh, and Blood Keep up and running. That was not the most eloquent way to say it, but you get what I mean. And uh, get Danark von Karstein on the field as well. Anyway, more Blood Dragons to come. Uh, Daddy Blood Dragons on the field now as well, so I can't wait to see more from him. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.